Hey everyone, it's John here with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be talking about the uh, new model comparison tool inside of the Google Ads attribution area. What this is uh, going to give you is different examples of different attribution models for your conversion actions as applied to your campaigns. What this means is you actually get to see how many people click on you know one campaign that end up you know converting a possibly another one. So if you're looking at how does my attribution and how does the conversion value and conversions differ by switching around uh, the model comparison. Or sorry, the attribution model, and you can do that by comparing those models. Previously, you know, you, you kind of interpreted, looked at top conversion path, and understood exactly how to properly attribute for your campaigns and your target uh, goals, so whether it be ROAS or CPA, uh, how to give the appropriate amount of conversion value and conversions to the campaign that's most likely uh, the campaign that is either started or had the most weight attributed to the conversions, um, but then also how it starts to interact within your own campaigns. You might be having a situation where you have a remarketing campaign, a brand campaign, uh, and a smart shopping campaign, and they're all kind of going after the same traffic. And you're not exactly sure how they're funneling through your your campaigns or how they're having multiple uh, interactions with your business. And you might look at or with your website or you know, obviously your business, and you might look at how do I need to grow where most of the majority of the interest is coming in. Um, so there's a way to kind of understand how to attribute uh, best for your campaign's goals and the lead flow for your, for your campaigns in Google Ads. And so I'm going to dive in here. Uh, if you go to the top right and click on tools and go under attribution, you'll see a page that looks like this. On the left-hand side, you'll be able to see the model comparison tool. Now, here's what's important. The conversion actions, choose a conversion action that you're most, um, I guess, interested in off the bat. First, like for e-commerce, mine would be the Google Ads app purchase. That's where uh, all of our conversions are being funneled into. So make sure that you're choosing the right conversion action. You're not choosing all because you'll see conversions for you know shopping, uh, view item, add to cart, search, begin check out all the other stuff that doesn't necessarily really matter. Um, or you just say all actions, including conversions. So if you have like three actions instead of conversion actions that you say yes, including conversions, you can choose this one. You'll see that I'm only counting the, the purchase. So you'll see 317 matches up with 317 there. Look back window. My recommendation is go as far back as possible. 90 days is going to be um, where the most you can look back if you're using a 90 day uh, click through attribution. If you have a 30 day click through attribution, the most you can look back is 30 days, but I like to look back at least 90 days. So that gives me the full, as much as possible, the full scope of what is going on with that traffic um, and how there might be interacting with, with those campaigns. So you might, if you set a view through uh, or look back window too short, you might only see, you know, um, a visit from one campaign to the other. But if you expand it by 90, they might have bounced back between two other campaigns two different times. So make sure that you have a full width of, of visibility available to you uh, as wide as you possibly can. For this, um, for this campaign, I'm gonna, or for this model comparison, I'm use uh, last 30 days. Just because I'm using this as an example, you can go back further if you'd like. You do, you know, last three months if you like, but you can you can choose the correct date range here. This is important: the cross network model. What you'll see is we've hidden the uh, the brand name here, but you'll see that these are all actually all search campaigns. So with the search campaigns, it gives me search attribution. However, with the cross cross network model, you can actually see that I can now import YouTube, Google Display, and Google Search Network, uh, whereas I only was able to see the Google Search Network from before. So when you would watch what happens to this these five campaigns here, when you turn this on, you'll actually it'll go from five campaigns to there we go, seven campaigns, and now I actually have uh, dynamic remarketing. Um, and video uh, campaigns here. I also, now it's nice to have the my smart shopping uh, campaign here, that, that S72, that's a smart shopping campaign. Now, here's what's cool. If I wanna compare, uh, let's say first click attribution to last click attribution, what you'll notice here is something pretty unique takes place that not a lot of people may have seen. Now wait for this to update here. Uh, there we go. So my smart shopping campaign, I can see that 789 uh, conversions are attributed to the first click and 740 are attributed to last click. So what this means is that if I was looking at last click attribution, my smart shopping campaign would say that I have 740 conversions in the last 30 days. But if I was using first click, it shows 789. Now, if I was using data-driven, it would show 850. Well, why? What was interesting is data-driven might say, well, they might've had multiple interactions with smart shopping. You might've seen the first click happen in smart shopping, but also clicks two, three, four, and five happen with smart shopping. And then the sixth click went to brand. So if you're running last click, you wouldn't have seen any sales to smart shopping. Data driven, you'd see multiple 
um, multiple interactions with smart shopping. And first click, you'd only attribute, you know, maybe one conversion uh, to to smart shopping because that's, you know, the campaign that actually has just one click attributed to it, not multiple clicks that deserves multiple um, uh, conversion attributed clicks, I guess I would say. So what's interesting here, though, is when, this is why it's important to choose the correct bidding, uh, sorry, the correct attribution model. If I'm running a smart shopping campaign and I'm running a brand, now I can't show this to you here, but this one, hopefully you'll see this part, at least just right there, it says branded. You'll see that um, I lose 6% of my conversions from first click to last click, but I gain in branded 18%. So it goes from 171 first click attributed conversions to a 202. Well, why? It means that the first click that came in to the campaign wasn't the brand. They came in from somewhere else and then Google the brand name and came back and converted. Now, you also see video retargeting. Now, video retargeting should be uh, all uh, technically first uh, or po post first click. It should be some sort of click number two or and beyond. But re remarketing in this campaign, we have it set to all traffic. So the first click that they could attribute to a Google Ads campaign sometimes could be the video retargeting. But what's interesting, you see that the first click is attributed to three uh, sales and the last click is attributed to seven because it is something that happens after the fact. It's one of the final things that people do before they convert is they get retargeted by a video. Uh, this is a new campaign here, so it's not really, you know, I don't have a ton of data, but um, yeah, it's it's something we can we can start to see these, these conversions come in. So what does this tell us? This basically allows us to identify the proper attribution model for our campaigns, how they interact with each other, and how to properly attribute the uh, conversion or conversion value to the proper campaign that you're using a specific goal for. As an example, if I have if I spend one dollar and I make four, that's a 400% return on ad spend. If I'm using linear and it was between smart shopping and brand, I'm attributing 50% of that conversion action to the smart shopping, 50% of that conversion action to brand, and now they have spent one dollar made two, so it's a 200 ROAS in both campaigns. Well, if I have a 200 or 400% ROAS goal in the smart shopping campaign, and I told it that it only had 200% of the conversion value attributed to that campaign, it's failed. Why is this important? Well, when you have a target return on ad spend on any campaign, it's gonna be restricted. So which means that if you try to apply uh, a value to it that's a fragmented of a value, and it doesn't have enough full value to meet that goal, it just starts to fizzle out and die. So that's why it's it's super important to even use the proper attribution model for your campaigns to say, you know, if I'm gonna give a 400% return on ad spend goal to you, and I don't give you the full 400% return on ad spend that your campaign may have started to, uh, but it, or the person started in that campaign that ultimately led to a conversion. If I'm using first click, I can give all that weight to that campaign. But if I use last click, it didn't see any sale. If I do use data driven, I see, you know, more sales. So using the proper attribution model and using the model comparison tool to understand how the traffic is flowing and where you should give the weights and then how you should also restrict that campaign based on target CPA, target ROAS, or maybe how you're just giving it, you know, a lot of good data by using target CPA and saying, Hey, here's all of the conversions that you had with first click and you're starting all of the, all of the, the past two uh, ultimate conversions, whether they come back to any other campaign or not, give the appropriate goal, and then give it the appropriate att attributed value to that goal to make sure that those are in line. You can't just give it a high goal and then take half the conversion values away by it, by giving it to our campaign and then wonder why the campaign is not functioning. <laughs> um, so hopefully it's a good good tip for you on how to use the model comparison tool inside Google Ads. I'm John Ram Solutions 8. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your grandmother, um, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.